quick point here, since we're already kind of going back and forth on it, can the field of 12 try to help out college football? I mean, I think we do a lot for college football in our little short existence. Thank you for watching. Those of you who are watching. Um, can we propose that we forget about the preseason rankings until week four? Oh, man. No doubt. I don't, I don't no understand doubt. it. Because, it, and, and obviously, I'm going to need a second and a third, and we're going to need some, like, it's been a while mm -hmm. since I did the whole student council thing, but Notre Dame started the season out fifth, and they couldn't be, I don't even know if they're in the top 40. Texas, I mean, do we even know what they are yet? They were unranked. Penn State was unranked. They're going to wind up being 12th. Florida was unranked. They've shown an awful lot. I mean, there's so much hmm. to be learned about these teams, transfers, new coaches, new starters, new teams, and it really does matter where you start. So in three weeks, it took Notre Dame three bad performances to fall out of the top 25, and it took for instance, a Penn State team to withstand a juggernaut offense in Purdue and then go down and just blow the doors off of one of the light heavyweights in the Jurassic Park at Auburn to now see themselves, what, they're 22 right now? Can we just – I'd like to get you guys' thoughts on that. I just don't like how we set the horses on the track and then let them run from the positions we set them as opposed to putting everybody in an even gate. Bryce? No, I think, I think it's a great point. I'd, I'd almost even venture to say week six would be great, you know, but I, but I think as soon as you, if, if you, you know, to have the playoff committee take week four or week six and have that much, uh, you know, uh, tape and, and, and in-game action, because what this, what the transfer portal did in terms of just shuffling everybody around. But what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, this, this culture in a locker room, Pack and I were talking about it before we started. I think a lot of these things that we're seeing, some of these guys that are in mean, Missouri state taking, you know, uh, Arkansas all the way to the wire app state right. beating an A&M. It's, it's, you, you can just tell that this, this is obviously affecting these first couple of games. And so I love your point, George. And I know we've talked about it, you know, for the last couple of years now, that's what needs to happen because you're right. And I think the biggest point is it's where you start, right? A Notre Dame starting unranked versus starting fifth completely changes the playoff committee because that can be the one that, that just throws a kink in the whole system. And if they're, if, again, if you don't play anybody and you're not that good and you skate through the whole schedule, it's where you start. And so I, I love it. I, I think that it needs to be something that you have the in-game footage, the game tape, start week four, start week six, start week eight. Hell, I don't care. But but it can't start it at week zero. Uh, Hack, your, your yeah. thoughts on this preseason ranking and and how we do it versus how we could do it? Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a T-shirt out there because we're dropping our we're dropping our uh, we're dropping our merch next next week. But I'm a yeah. big pod guy, so I think we should start with some pods, maybe. But now, in all seriousness, um, I, I see the merit in it, and I see what you guys are saying, and I think the one thing that you'll hear all of us consistently preach is show us every 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 week every day and that's that's just part of us having been in that position in the locker room and understanding the expectations and that's what I guarantee every single one of these coaches are preaching no matter where they've been ranked um you know you're only as good as your last game only as good as your last snap and and you got to continually prove it and we've seen teams come up and down um you know fans look at it as the hangover and this and that but um the, the people that that deserve the preseason one through four or five rankings, they usually get it right because those are the ones that do come out and show it every week for the most part. Um, the reality of it is, though, is that I think the fans, media, you don't have any preseason rankings. You can give them anything to talk about. So, you know, I think there's there's part mm -hmm. of a pageantry to it. And I think it ultimately I think it does work itself out in the end. And I think the expansion to 12 in the college football playoff is even going to work it out Work, allow it to work itself out more in a, in a much more uh, fair manner. I think you won't have as many teams bitching and moaning about, you know, Oh, we're the fifth team out, you know, Hey, we'll put 12 in there. I think if you're, if you're upset that you're outside the 12, then you gotta, you gotta be figuring, you gotta be doing some evaluation in the mirror. Um, I like the concept, love the concept, but I think uh, I just think it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to change the culture of college football fans for that. Uh, I think people like it too much. Trevor, 
Let me let me take a quick second. Hack made a point. We got Field of 12 merchandise dropping soon. So this hey. thing makes me look really, really good. Hey. And so I'll uh, go grab you some. Wow, one dude. more time. One Amazing. more time. Wow. Hey, you, hold, you hold baby Griffin in your No, right no, no. Yeah. Not one more time doing that. One you more time. What they call so that, bro? shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we'll go. grab you some merch. It's dropping soon. But <laughs> hey, I, hey, Trevor, I, jump I, I to agree. the shot to do that again. Taco Bueno? What? Yeah, Taco <laughs> Bueno? I'm telling you, just give me a call. I, I'm your man. Hey, but hey I, I agree. I think that preseason rankings give us something to talk about, but no team, no fan is ever saying, hey, remember when we were ranked top 10 to start the year? It's all about what happens throughout the year, but it puts an expectation Yep. And it's up to the coaching staffs and the individual players to manage that expectation. And if you don't, well, now you got a fan base that's really upset um, and, and you've got a team that's underperforming, right? Yep. If somebody's giving you the respect to be a top 10 team, let's say a top four team to start the year and you don't end up there or you're not in the race at the end of the year, yep. in my opinion, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I remember as a player myself, um, when I was playing at AM, we got named – a few weeks into the season in the top four, we ended up unranked at the end of the year. That's going to haunt me every single day for the rest of my life because we didn't finish the way that we were supposed to and the way that other people thought that we could, right? So, so let me we, ask you, let's go right to that because I was going to ask all you guys this follow-up question, but Trevor, we'll start there. That's amazing. What if your Aggie team started the season 24th? And then even as you guys start to hit your stride, you're at 15, 14, you're within a puncher shot. Like, cause again, we're just stacking expectations up. You just spoke to how it affected you as a player, but doesn't it also affect coaches? No doubt. Notre Dame, Notre Dame's Jack Swarbrick and all their, you know, headmasters and all their suits have been walking around all summer said we got a top five team but what if notre dame started the season out ranked 25th you go to ohio state you battle a monster you can respect that you come home you take an l to marshall we're young we we're only 25th anyway and then you have this like you know this wrestling match with the you know with the half sleep pac-12 team today the, but the expectations completely change doesn't it hurt a coach to be thrown up higher than what you are but converse to that, couldn't it help a coach like a, a, a Franklin or an, a Napier or something like that? They're really on a racehorse, but the racehorse was counted so far back. They know they're, you know, they got kind of sandbagged. Does that affect coaches the same as you think it affects players and teams? It absolutely does. I don't care who you are. Pressure sits on your shoulders. Now, it sits on different people's shoulders a different way. But pressure sits on your shoulders. So if you got a single digit in front of your name as a university, there is pressure leading into the season, whether you're a coach, whether you're a player, whether you're support staff, it doesn't matter. It's always this is going to be the year. Now, the underdog story is always the greatest story because you're starting from behind. Nobody's watching you. You're not getting media attention. Tim Tebow's not coming and doing a walk along in your in your indoor, you know, the week of the game to try and get everything. Like, you don't get all that. So you just focus internally to try and get to that point. So you battle, battle, battle. And the next thing you know, you look around and you're there at the top. If you start at the top, you got to battle and battle and battle to stay there. And in my opinion, even some of the best competitors are not able to do that. And that's what makes a Nick Saban so incredibly impressive is he walks into the season every single year with a target on his back. He says, come at us. We got the players. We're ready culturally. Let's go do it. And not many people can do that. And you see that year in and year out teams dropping out of the top 10 pretty quickly. Which speaks volumes to Georgia, <laughs> Bama, Ohio state Clemson for a really long time. They wear it. They own it. I mean, they, they relish having it on. I mean, it just speaks volumes. What's going on, guys? Rob Doster here, the founder of the Field of 68 and the Field of 12 Media Networks. I wanted to take a quick minute to let you guys know about an exciting new project that we have been working on for the last three months. 
the almanac, an all-encompassing preview of the 2022-23 college basketball season. We spoke with every single Division I head coach to give you a robust and accurate preview for all 363 Division I college basketball teams. We have predictions for conference finishes for all 32 leagues. We have features on the best freshmen, the best big men, the breakout stars, the coaches on the hot seat, so much more. It is 600,000 words of sheer happiness for the college basketball fan in your life. The Almanac is going to be available for digital purchase on September 26th for just $19.99, but you can pre-order it today using the promo code HOOPS and save 20%. Just hit the link in the description below.